how do you deal with salespeople? <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Vlad in Russia writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, in my country and especially in my city, we don't have so many different audio stores. And every time I ask, for example, to listen to the latest headphones from Sennheiser, they don't let me do this, even if they're available and they stand directly off the shelf. They're almost, uh, they, they almost always say, you don't have the money for these and you can never afford to buy them for yourself, so go away. Even if I want to listen to a more or less cheap system from Kef, they simply do not want to waste time on me. This is probably due to the fact that I am only 22 years old and don't look like a rich person, but I still want to touch audiophilia. How do I talk to them? How do I behave? I am so sorry, Vlad. That sucks. That is really absolutely wrong. And I want to just take one of those guys and take him out behind the, the, you know, and slap him upside the head. Just take him out in the back and, you know, look, I, we, we run a business. I get it. You don't want kids running into the shop and, hey, let me listen to this. But you're a 22-year-old young man who will someday be a consumer of audio goods because you're into it, right? And imagine somebody who actually does care. Imagine a salesperson who said, hey, Vlad, sure. I mean, what the, you know, what's it off there? Uh, I mean, it, it's no sweat, uh, no skin off them to let you listen. And that person will be your buddy. And the day that you actually do buy something, he'll get the sale. I, I remember once back years ago when I was into photography, there was a store in Anaheim called Vic's Cameras. And Vic was just the nastiest old curmudgeon. And I was, I wasn't even your age, I was probably 15 or 16 years old, didn't have any money, but man, did I want that camera gear. And I'd go hang out at Vic's. I'm sure he didn't like me hanging out. And they, uh, one guy there was really nice to me. I would try and, you know, ask Vic questions about this. And he just, just like this guy, just kid, you know, come back when you have some money and talk to me. And I just kind of slink away. But and then I wound up not dealing with Vic, but I, I searched around and I found one guy who wasn't so nasty and he was okay talking to me. And we kind of chummed up. And at one point I saw this used strobe, you know, a, a flash, electronic flash unit. And it was, um, I think it was a Honeywell. It was really cool. Gray, had a little oval uh, front on the thing and it would hook up to my camera and I would look cool. and. All the press photographers had that. And I only had 20 bucks, and I think the thing was like 50 bucks. So I kept talking to the guy, and he says, why don't you put it on a layaway? Okay, I gave him my 20 bucks and mowed lawns and did what I had to do. And over time, I bought that from him. And years later, when I was your age, I, well, I was in the army at your age, but 19 years old or so later on, I actually bought cameras from them, but I would never talk to Vic because Vic was, uh, yeah, you see what rhymes with Vic. <laughs> I don't know what it is in Russian, but eh. anyway, what I would do is, I mean, it's unconscionable the way you're being treated, and, I, and I'm sorry on behalf of everybody in this business. I would just try and befriend somebody there if you can and just try and weasel your way into something, helping out at the store, just hanging out and, and let them know that you're neither a threat nor a pain in the ass and you'll find somebody, I hope, or go to a different store. Somebody's bound to befriend you because not everybody's a jerk in this industry and I bet you'll find somebody who can relate, who themselves was once 22 years old and didn't have any money. You'll find it. Just put a big smile on your face 
and, and go about life trying to befriend people, and I think you'll be okay. Good luck with that. And if you're ever out here, please come visit us. Thanks. Good luck, Vlad. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.